Yo, what's going on guys? Today I want to talk about all of the new Uber content that is being introduced in the patch 3.16. So we got a lot of information about them in a lot of different sources. So the league announcement, Twitter posts and the Q&A. So I decided to compile all of the information and present it in one video. So let's start with the Uber Blighted Maps. So they are called blight ravaged blighted maps and they can drop from a normal blighted map but it has to be at least tier 14 so you can't drop it from tier 13 and below and the main difference is from the normal blighted map is that you can anoint it up to nine times but you can't anoint it more than three times with the same oil so for example you can use three amber oils for Reduce cost of building towers, free crimson oils for blighted chest unlucky and so on. So this is basically to prevent you from reducing the cost of building towers to like 100%, using teal oils to reducing the duration of the encounter to zero and so on. But the second thing that it uh, does is it's, it, it's increasing the monster level from uh, in the zone to 85 so in normal tier 16 the monster level is 83 so 85 basically means they are dropping higher tier items and also they are just harder to kill and on top of that they have 200 percent more life they are faster and so on so overall it's much much harder encounter but you can also choose your difficulty a little bit uh, thanks to the oils, oils. So for example, you can go for free amber, free sepia and free uh, clear oil to get more uh, damage on your towers, reduce the movement speed of monsters and reduce cost of, a building, cost of the buildings. Or you can go for just nine reward chests, but at that point, the encounter would be much, much harder. So it's up to you how hard you want to make it. And in terms of rewards, I don't think we know if just the chests will drop more loot but i suspect they will they will overall drop more loot also area is uh, level 85 so the bases are gonna be higher tier it says it's monster level 85 so i'm not sure if the rewards from the chests are gonna be also 85 but i hope it uh, does mean that and obviously the more reward oils you put on it more rewards you're gonna get overall and the next reward is the new unique so it's called strangle cusp and it says you can anoint it up to three more times so basically additional enchant it basically means anoint so you can anoint it four times just one base plus three and this is actually a very powerful effect not only you can anoint it four times but also you can corrupt it and if the item breaks so it turns yellow it will gain some random mods, but it will keep the enchantments. So it is a very good target for corrupting and even double corrupting. Because if you double corrupt and it breaks into some kind of influence item, you can get some influence mod. Like imagine if you um, double corrupt it and it becomes hunter and you get plus one chaos gems and plus one dexterity gems. It would be like insane item. Like, multiple mirrors worthy probably but obviously it's gonna happen very very rarely but still you can get some decent maybe double corruption or some just some normal explicit modifiers okay next one is bridge so not only we got new bridge stone which is flawless bridge stone but also just the normal bridge stones has been buffed so now rare monsters in the area will drop additional reward type. So basically just like Delirium, you will have just one reward that you will just randomly drop from all of the monsters. And it affects all of the tiers of bridge zone. So it's from normal, enriched, charged and pure. And flawless will have two additional rewards instead of one, but also four random modifiers. So these are basically just a random map modifiers. And here you will get two. Also, it's zone item level uh, 84, which means even more experience. And monsters have more life, rarity, and pack size, just like from uh, 
normal pure bridgestone. So in terms of reward, again, you will get uh, some random drops from the monsters, but also we will have a new unique, which can drop actually from any uh, flawless bridgestone. So only flawless, but what I mean by any is it, it can be Chayula, Zov, Ash, Tool, and so on. And what it does is it has some random resists roll from minus to plus. I believe it's from minus 30 to plus 30. So it's kind of like Ventor Gamble where you, where you will have to divine it to get the best result to get all of your resistances positive or at least the ones that you care about. But what it, what it also does is socket and non-exceptional, which basically means not empower, enlighten uh, or enhance. So everything else. Support gems also support skills from your body armor. So basically this turns your chest into seven link, which is pretty powerful, but you have to remember that you are losing the amulet slot for this. Also, you can't corrupt this item because if you corrupt it, you will lose the uh, socket if you mm, change the implicit. So it is pretty good, especially if you would uh, roll it with a lot of positive resistances. But overall, I would say there is a lot of powerful amulets that are on the same level. Again, with like plus one to gems and second mod with also plus one to gems is probably going to be similar level as this one. So it is still really good, but nothing like too crazy. And the other reward is we will be able to drop the uh, fractured bridge specific chest. So previously we were able to drop this chest, uh, well not drop it, get it from the vendor recipe. Basically you have to sell 60 bridge rings and you get this chest with just a random modifiers. And this chest has some specific modifiers that you can only get on this chest. So most of the time when you would get it you would just get uh, something really good like here increase global defenses but everything else would be pretty bad but here we will be able to get a fracture version of this chest which is very powerful but apparently it's gonna be pretty rare to get it but i guess we will see how rare it actually is okay next one is delve so delve is not really new and well not really uber content, but at the same time it's kind of is uber content because you can scale it infinitely. So it technically is the hardest content in the game. So I'm also gonna mention the changes to that. So first change is now the catch up mechanic scales up to tier 13. So you don't have to do delve at all until you reach like tier 14 maps. And if you do that, your delve will catch up with you up to the monster level 80, which is again tier 13. So less delve to do. Uh, next one, ch next change is the zones with specific uh, like delve rewards now have a chance to drop fracture. So for example, minion node has a chance to drop the specter chest and it can be fractured which is also going to be very, very expensive if you're, if you're going to get that, especially if you're going to get it on the uh, nice base like Valregalia or Astral Blade or something like that. Next change is now the biomes and just specific zones will have additional positive modifiers, not only bad ones, but also positive ones. So here, for example, side passage contains 77% more fossils and crawler consumes less full sulfide. So this, for example, would affect every room in, let's say, like this zone. And this zone would have like a different one. This uh, modifier is actually especially powerful since the another change they are doing is that fossils will drop rarely in other encounter than Delph. So getting fossils from Delph might, might be a very good strategy to get currency. And also the strategy where you are just darkness running. So for example, you are choosing this zone and you just run, you don't destroy the walls. You are just running, checking the side zones for fossils and then running again and again the same zone with a mod like this is probably gonna be much, much better this league. 
And here is another example. So this zone has a boss and the boss drops 17 fossils, but also the boss always does crit strikes. So it's much harder boss, but better rewards. Okay, so now let's talk about the Uber domain of timeless conflict. So basically Uber Legion. So we are getting unrelenting timeless emblems, which will give you 10% improved rewards and that's per emblem. So technically that's 50%. We don't know what improved rewards means. Is it more rewards? Is it the rewards are better, like better chance for jewels? chance to get like, maybe better uniques. We don't know exactly, but I guess improved is improved. So 50% is pretty nice. Mm. But also they increase the difficulty by a lot. So each one of them gives 10% increased maximum life. So if it's five of them, that's 50% every time they are revived. So each time you kill a boss and next time you kill it again, it's going to have 50% more life. And kill, you kill it again and another 50%. Well, increase, not more. But so yeah, monsters are going to have a lot of life if you're going to use five of them. Next one is enemy penetrate resistances and overall physical damage. So again, this is very bad for your <laughs> defense. So it's going to be really hard. But what you can do is you actually don't even need to go for five of them. You, you need to remember that you can do it as a freeway, so you can use free unrelenting uh, emblems. It's probably still going to be pretty nice. And also you, you can mismatch them with normal emblems. So you can go for, let's say, three unrelenting ones and two normal ones. So you will get 30% improved rewards, but encounter would be not as hard. So again, you can choose your difficulty. And also from what I saw, each type of emblem has its own pool of mods and it always probably gonna have the same mods. So for example, this one is a Val emblem, so it's focused on penetrating your resistances and physical damage reduction. And all of them always have, monsters have increased maximum life. So for example, here is another one, which is Karui. Again, it also has 10% maximum life each time they are revived. But instead of penetration, it gives monster life regen and chance to avoid being stunned. So I believe this one is much, much easier. So if you would go for, let's say, four normal ones and one unrelenting, I would highly suggest to go for this one. Even though 1% life regen might be pretty hard if you revive boss uh, too many times, they will regen life much, much faster. But again, I think it's easier than the oval one. Here is the third one. The picture is a bit slow, uh, smaller, but you can still read it. Again, 10% increased life, but it also gives monster 4% uh, additional physical damage reduction and increased resistances. So it reduces your damage by a lot. So if you revive monster like 10 times, they will have 40 elemental resists and 40 physical reduction, which again, it's pretty bad, but I think this one still is probably the worst one. But if you kill monsters, I get like, if you get, if you are one-shotting them, which you will probably not be able to do because of the increased maximum life, this is not that bad. The next one is Marakev. So this one is giving monster attack and cast speed and movement speed. So this one stacked on top of this one so now not only monster will penetrate your resistances, but they also will deal that damage faster. So that's a pretty deadly combo. So doing again, doing five of them with all of the different mods is gonna be very, very hard, I expect. And we still don't know what is gonna be the uh, white one. So we only got four of them. And the another reward, uh, not only 10% improved reward, the another one is the chest. We don't know 100% that it's gonna drop from the uh, Uber emblems, but it's like almost confirmed because of the how does it look and what it does. So what it does is it gives you some life, uh, evasion and energy shield, they both expire faster. Temporal Rift, which is the new skill that uh, 
Beer brings you back in time, has no reservation, normally it has 10%, but the most important mode is 100% of damage taken is recouped as life, which basically means it is being recovered in 4 seconds. Which is pretty powerful mechanic, if you think about it, if you get hit uh, like 2 times, then the next time you get hit, like 3rd time, you're gonna recover your life like super fast. If you get hit just once, 100% life over 4 seconds is not like crazy crazy, you can always just use instant life flask and you will recover it much much faster obviously. But it's still a really good mod. But also you have to remember that this is the chest and there's a lot of powerful chests, just like with amulet from the bridge. Chest is a very contested spot, so fitting this uh, chest in your build might be very very hard. Next uber content is actually a new league. The Scourge maps, you can scourge them up to 10 times, so tier 10, which will give you to give the map some insane mods, like Monsters in Nightmare deal 120% more damage and take 45% less damage, and you lose some life when you are over there, so this is crazy, just uber content, but obviously on top of that you are getting some nice rewards, like every rare monster drops 7 stack decks, that's insane amount of stack decks, just from one map. But here is again the idea of all of this uber content, it is kind of scalable, you can choose your own difficulty, so again you can go for lower tiers. Just like with emblems, you can choose less emblems, with blighted maps you can use uh, defensive oils instead of better rewards oils, so you can choose your own difficulty overall. And the last one is simulacrums, so this is not the best picture of simulacrum but it actually is kind of a good representation because to be honest that's how my simulacrum look like most of the time uh, so the chances that we got is actually we didn't get a new item for like uber simulacrums or something just normal simulacrum now scales up to 30 ways instead of 20. so i believe this Actually, we'll probably not make simulacrums uh, more expensive because most of the people will still probably just do 20 of them and the price will be based on that, especially early on in the league. Maybe later on people will do more of them so and it will be easier, so maybe it, the price will go up. But again, you have to remember 30 ways is actually a long time. This will la normally when I do 20 ways, the encounter lasts for like 20 minutes. So 30 ways, that's half an hour per simulacrum. Even actually probably longer because the next 10 ways are gonna be harder. So it might take you like 40 minutes to do one simulacrum. So I don't expect price to actually go up of them. So in terms of rewards, now every single wave has a higher chance to drop caster jewels. So I believe that also affects the first 20 waves. So just overall more caster jewels. And past uh, wave 20, you can drop additional uh, simulacrum specific unique items. So now uh, you were able to only drop one unique, so megalomania, split personality or voices from uh, simulacrum. Now we will be able to drop multiple of them. And also they mentioned that Talisman and Perandus reward has been removed from the Delirium Orbs, so, and overall just from Delirium, so I expect it also has been removed so, from Simulacrums, so that's, again, overall uh, increased drops from Simulacrums, because, again, less chance to get some bad rewards, because Talisman and Perandus were pretty bad. And Delirium Orbs are also more common, which, again, I think will... Uh, make simulacrums a bit cheaper, so that's pretty nice. Okay, to sum things up, in terms of difficulty, I believe the 30 wave simulacrum and 5 way emblems are gonna be probably the hardest one. Uh, like with simulacrum, the way you kinda scale your difficulty, you just don't do later waves, so to be able to actually do 30 waves is gonna be really hard. With, again, the all different five emblems, five way mm, domain of Tamil's config is gonna be extremely hard. I would highly suggest to go for like maybe one or two unrelenting ones and then three normal ones. Blighted maps, I believe, is not gonna be that hard, especially if you go for this mod 60% reduced cost of building towers, 
tier 16 blighted muffs are actually pretty easy for a lot of builds so even going for uh, uber one i don't expect it's gonna be too hard but i might be wrong i guess we're gonna see and also the breach uh, i don't believe it's gonna be like extremely hard like it, don't get me wrong it is gonna be hard but compared to the emblems and the 30 wave simulacrum i don't think it's gonna be like that hard the one that i am actually personally uh the most excited for is the simulacrum so in case you haven't watched my previous video i i am farming simulacrums every league a lot of them so i love doing simulacrums and i always wanted to have extended version of simulacrum so this is actually a very good news for me and my first goal is to, is gonna be to be able to clear 30 simulacrums so that's gonna be it for this video thanks for watching and see you in the next one